This is Will Lindsay Adam, New York City-based director and creator of theater, television, and film. And today I am thrilled to be speaking with a Renaissance woman. She is an incredible visual artist, journalist, opera singer, screenwriter, just an overall creative force, the one and only Roselle Labone. Hello, Roselle, how are you? Hello, Will, it's great to be here. It is so nice to finally meet you. Roselle, I wanna just dig right into what you wanted to talk about because I absolutely love this incredible, incredible concept that you have, the Aldeo Trio. Talk to me a little bit in the audience a little bit about this incredible creation that you've created alongside uh, a friend of yours, correct? That's right. So my uh, creative partner in crime, Reese Ree Johnson and I, this is our second collaboration over the last year and a half. And our first creation, uh, Tramples, was uh, released internationally and has gone on to win many awards at international film festivals. Um, I'm really excited about this next project we're undertaking. Uh, this is around the story of three singers. So we have Antonio Brambolini, Scott Buckland, and we have the newcomer, Carly, AKA Carlotta Cobblebottom. And she is uh, a New Zealand soprano fish out of water. So what's happened is the most famous member of the trio has died in suspicious circumstances and it's up to a talented yet hapless New Zealand soprano to come in and save the day as the rest of the team are scrambling. So <laughs> we have just this wonderful sort of opportunity to cover the world of opera. It's got intrigue, it's got high fashion and a lot of colorful characters appearing along the way as well. Some fantastic new, new songs, a lot of laughs along the way. So yeah, I um, love we're basically- it. And and I yes. love the way that you describe it, Kimmy Schmidt meets Pavarotti and Friends, and also, <laughs> dare I say, a little Phantom of the Opera. I know a little slip of the Carlotta in there as a musical theater buff myself. You can't, you can't bypass the Carlotta. She will not be denied. <laughs> and absolutely, it's, it's a role that has so much comic potential. And I think there's a little Carlotta in all of us. I've actually myself have played the role of of Carlotta here in New Zealand and um, <laughs> the scope for, for the comic potential in that. We have um, sort of a fan for the opera-esque hijinks happening in one uh, episode behind the scenes as the trio prepare to make a comeback to have their big opening night. We have um, a fanatic opera fan who has devoted her life to Gianni Aldeo. He's a uh, He's our late lamented comrade, fallen comrade in song. He's the one who's died suddenly at Milan Fashion Week. And he's best known for singing nine high seas atop Mount Kilimanjaro, performing all sorts of great feats of daring do. And so this woman is this one opera fanatic fan is determined to find out the truth behind his suspicious death. And so as you can imagine, lots of things are gonna come up to thwart the opening night of this great trio. So I find absolutely out love it. And I can't wait to see this, hopefully as a web series, or dare I say, even on a streaming platform sooner rather than later. And in addition to that, Russell, you talked about obviously your amazing singing. I wanna know, when did you realize, was it while you were growing up that you had such a beautiful singing voice? Yes, it's well, it's been um, a, a wonderful journey for me. Um, so I, I began life as, as a writer. That was what my, my dream was. Well, I wrote my first musical when I was about 11 years old um, and inspired by, of course, like most kids growing up, all the pop culture around them, you absorb it and turn into something of your own. And that's what I was doing at, at the time. I think my first musical might have been written on electric typewriter. So, <laughs> so you know, as, as I matured, I, I, I found a love of journalism and I became really passionate about that. I'm writing for local youth pages in the local paper. And then um, I saw my first opera. My dad probably dragged me along to see my first opera. It was my dad who really, my parents always took me to see musicals and that's what we did as a family. And I, just, I remember seeing that amazing junkyard set at Cats for the very first time going to Australia you know crossing the ditch it was a huge deal because we didn't have that kind of 
level of, of performing here in New Zealand at the time. So you would go to Australia and that's what we did as a family. But to see my first opera kind of developed to a whole other level for me and opened up a whole other world of, of abil artistic ability. You know, that, of course, Magic Flute has that most famous of opera arias, you know, the Queen of the Night, the high Fs. <laughs> And um, it's it's just a spectacular opera to go to. It's it's perennial. And at the time, though, I think oh, I was duly unimpressed, and I said, no, I'm going to become a journalist. I want to be a writer. And I was published in a book of short short stories for young New Zealand authors. I went on to uh, do the Catherine Mansfield Prize, things like that. Um, so I to then realise when I turned 16, and I listened to Carmen for the first time and fell in love with the spicy just dramatic yet so complex woman who is herself right up until that you know ends final scene with Don Jose you know and she's just she doesn't you know let him pass she's like I will not let you pass and she meets a tragic end but she is forever calm in the whole opera and that just really resonated with me and so I fell head over heels in love with the art form and then went decided I'm going to go and train at the New Zealand School of Music which is what I did and I've been on stage ever since you haven't That's been able amazing. to get me off the stage. Rochelle I love the fact that you've been able to now combine all of your talents you know as a writer as a creative as a performer I, I know that the sky's the limit for you and I just want to let the audience know for more on the amazing Rochelle Labone you can read more about her right below this video. Rosel, I'm so excited you're coming on board this incredible new social media app, Phoenix360. And also, I'm so excited that we're now connected. I'm so excited too. The possibilities of a platform like this. Well, I'm, you know, in recent months, I've actually been performing virtually because, of course, lockdown life and the opportunities for artists are actually become there's a myriad of ways that we can now connect That's right. this way I've been separated as you were at the moment Will in my favorite city in the entire planet you know New York where I made my debut not that long ago at the National Opera Center in the world premiere of an opera last year in Sampsonville probably the highlight of my life so far creatively and I just miss but the, that city so much but the fact that we can connect this way via a platform like Phoenix is is just revolutionary, really. Amen. And I agree with you 5,000%, Rochelle. Well, listen, next time you're in New York, you know you can reach out to me. I cannot wait to get together. And again, thank you so <laughs> much for your time today. Thank you so much. It's been an absolute pleasure talking with you.